But why would God want somebody to suffer? God likes it. We're trying to kill the flesh. Direction. <clears throat> Don't tell me Christians do it better. I am a born again Christian, and today I'm going to answer the web's most searched questions all about Christianity. Well, I'm not, but I'm still going to answer them while continuously interrupting you, obviously. <laughs> Please subscribe. Number one. Do Christians fast? No. Well, the answer is yes. I think I jumped in too soon. <laughs> and perhaps there's a Christian listening right now thinking, yeah, but I haven't fasted for a long time. So over to you. If you are a Christian, tell me, when was the last time you spent time in prayer and fasting? Can I answer? I'm, I'm not a Christian, but I've definitely got an answer. I fast every night, usually while I'm asleep, because that's the only time I can manage not to eat, because I'm a greedy sod. Why do Christians fast? Why? What, what are they doing it for? Why do they need to do it? Do they need to somehow prove to God that they believe in him? Which is a bit of a waste of time because... You see, the difference between how a Christian fasts and how other religions fast... Don't tell me Christians do it better. ...is we're not trying to do it in any way to sort of win the favour of God, to sort of earn our salvation, because we know that is hopeless. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ alone. But when we fast, what we're doing is we're trying to kill the flesh. What? So are we now saying that part of Christianity or being a Christian is starving yourself for God's amusement? We're saying to God, you are more important than this meal in front of me and I want to draw closer to you. Sometimes a Christian will fast if perhaps they're worried or they're nervous about a certain situation in their life. Oh yeah, because nobody that isn't a Christian has ever not been able to eat because they feel anxious or they're worried about a loved one or something important that's going on in their life. That's strictly reserved for Christians. Christians, and it's because God likes it. So they'll draw close to God in a time of prayer. And that time which you would spend eating, that time which you would spend, if you like, nourishing your flesh, is then given to time spent alone with God. But I always thought the purpose of fasting was to guard against gluttony and impure ah. thoughts. Why does everything have to be about God? And I know that may sound like a stupid thing to say, but why would God want somebody to suffer by starving themselves? That's not what a fast is meant to be. Do Christians swear. Well, the sad reality is, yes, I think some Christians do swear. I think it's a sin that some Christians struggle with, but notice I did call it a sin. I did notice, but what is a sin and who exactly decides whether something you do is a sin or not a sin? So as far as I can understand, doing something bad is a sin, doing something good is not a sin. Isn't that just morals? And you certainly do not need to be a believer in God to have good morals. Now, does that mean that Christians don't make mistakes? No. There are only two types of people that get into heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Hang on a minute, I can see exactly which way this is gonna go. And I think every single Christian would say, I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven because Jesus died for my sins. <laughs> Christians are not perfect. Well, there may be one or two Christians I know of that didn't get the memo, and they both officially like to give the impression in their videos that they do think they're perfect. And saying that either perfect people or forgiven people are the only two types of people that get into heaven is really, really stupid. Because using that logic, surely it would be okay to be a complete dick for your entire life because you're gonna get forgiven in the end anyway? Do Christians believe in reincarnation? No, we don't believe in reincarnation. We don't believe that you come back as an animal depending on what deeds you've done in this life. Now, I actually can't remember if the idea of reincarnation is mentioned in the Bible. Some of you will know I was raised Catholic, went to Catholic school, blah, 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 blah. But it certainly mentions being born again as a child of God through his son, Jesus Christ. So if being born again isn't reincarnation, then what exactly is it? Oh, but it's being born via God as his son. Doesn't matter, disregard everything I said. Clearly something else, that's a load of old tosh in the Bible. Direction. <clears throat> I'm flattered, but I said I went to Catholic school, not that I was a Catholic priest. The Bible teaches us this, that every single person in the world will one day rise again. Direction. <laughs> Whether you've put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ or not, you will one day have a bodily direction. Those who reject Jesus Christ will rise, they'll rise. 
but they'll be cast into judgment for all of eternity. But now I know this is only my opinion, but that definitely sounded like a threat to me. But those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will rise. They will rise with Christ to eternal life. And the question you need to ask yourself is this. Why do I need to fear somebody that doesn't exist? Or at least nobody can prove exists. Now, as some of you will know, I've always refused to label myself as an atheist, except for in the title of this video, obviously, because a person who won't believe in God until somebody can prove that God is real answers the most asked questions on the internet about religion doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Because atheism isn't a belief system. It's just a lack of belief. And a lot of you will also know that I'm a fan of Ricky Gervais and the way he addresses people that question him about his lack of belief. You're a Christian. You believe that God exists. You say yes. I say prove it to me. You say you can't. I say I don't believe you then. Do Christians believe Jesus is God? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But how can he be? Isn't he the son of God? Yes, this is so important. And so many people in the world right now are trying to demote Christ. They're trying to take away his deity, his Godhead. He's not just a priest. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a great figure. Jesus Christ is God in a flesh. And that is the message of the Bible. Okay, well, let's look at what you just said then. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. So is he a reincarnation of God? No, he can't be because Christians don't believe in reincarnation. Is he biologically God's son? Well, that doesn't work either because nobody can prove anything other than the idea of God. And ideas don't have children. It's all getting really confusing, isn't it? When you actually stop to look at what's being said. Jesus himself said, I and the Father are one. God the Father is one with Jesus Christ. So make sure you remember this, that true authentic Christianity, which has gone back to all the creeds, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles Creed, Apollo Creed, all the doctrines of old, all the men of old, the apostles taught this, that Jesus Christ is God. Does Christianity have a capital letter? Well, this one made me chuckle a little bit. Yes, Christianity should have a capital letter because Christianity is named after Christ. Jesus who was a person and just like whatever your name is say you're John say you're Mary watching this you wouldn't like it with a little lowercase m would you you want to be a big m a capital m Christianity starts with a c and so it is with Christianity we name it after Christ and actually the King James Version and the new King James Version take it one step further and they do something well let me show you what they do ah the King James Bible the worst version of the Bible now if Christians like him could just say look the bible's a storybook but i get so much comfort from it it makes me feel good then we wouldn't have need for videos like this does christianity accept other religions well i'm gonna give this a hard no and i'll tell you why in just a second well i really want to know what the person means when they ask that well allow me to elaborate do they mean Will a Christian accept me if I come to their church and I'm from another religion? No, that's not what they mean, because that refers to people, not gods, of which there are thousands. Why is it that you, a god, is the one that you choose to worship? while dismissing all the other gods that are available to you. I'm sure you would welcome somebody from the Muslim faith or the Jewish faith or the Hindu faith into your church, but you would then be continuously trying to convince them that Christianity is the only path for them. Well, a true Christian really would. You would get a warm welcome if you entered into a fellowship, if you were a Muslim, a Sikh, a Hindu. True Christians would wrap their arms around you and say, it's so great you're here today. Let us tell you about Jesus. See? They're Muslim, they're Jewish, they're Hindu. They don't want to know about Jesus. So why are they in your church? But does it mean that all roads lead to Rome? Does it mean that everyone can get to heaven by following their own religion and their own faith? Well, I for one, I'm not holding my breath. Well, the Bible is so clear. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. And my friends, the harsh reality is this. There is no name which can be given to men or women by which we can ever be saved except for the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other sacrifice that is acceptable apart from the blood sacrifice where Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. That's the only way to get to heaven is through him alone. Well, that doesn't seem very Christian, does it? Because no longer than a few minutes ago, you were saying that the Christian church welcomes everybody with 
with open arms while trying to convince them that Jesus is the chosen path. And now you're saying that it's impossible for anyone to get into heaven, you know, that place that nobody can prove exists. But you're saying now that unless you believe in God and Jesus in the way that Christians do, you're not getting into heaven. What about what Muslims believe? They believe in heaven as well. It's their own interpretation of heaven. But why is their religion so much more invalid than your religion? Answer me that. Do Christians believe in karma? Well, again, it depends what you mean by that. Well, karma is karma. You know, what goes around comes around. If you do a good deed today, you'll receive your reward tomorrow. Or did I just make that up? Or are you questioning what the asker of that question means by that question? Because you know that the word karma comes from Indian religion and philosophy. So it's obviously invalid because it's not Christianity. The Bible actually teaches you reap what you sow. So that idea of what goes around comes around is kind of true, you know? If a man sows to the flesh, the Bible says he will reap from the flesh. If you sow out lots of sinful things, well, it will come back to you. The Bible says the way of the sinner is hard. So if you commit lots of sins, you will find that you walk a hard path. You will reap what you sow. So that's a yes then. I think you just don't like using the word karma and you're questioning what the person means by karma because it's not a word found in the Bible. To answer the question, no, we don't believe in karma, but we do have a sort of similar idea that you will reap what you sow. Just say yes then, because that's exactly what karma is. Is Christianity declining? Well, my atheist friends would say yes it is. But just before you atheists sort of chuckle and think, oh yeah, we're doing so well in England and in America, I just would challenge any atheist who's listening right now. I find this fascinating. You think of the biggest atheist channels on YouTube right now. So you've got Cosmic Skeptic, you've got Genetically Modified Skeptic. Um, who else have we got? Jacqueline Glenn, okay? These guys have got 400,000, maybe 800,000 subscribers at the most. And yet, you think of some of the Christian channels, like The Bible Project or Lion of Judah, and they've got like 2 million subscribers. So it kind of gives you an idea of the proportion of atheists in the world versus the proportion of Christians in the world right now. Boring! You could have just said no. Religion isn't on the decline. There are statistics, but there's lots of them and they're very, very boring. But to put it all in a nutshell, 85% of the world identify themselves as religious. So 15% of the world's population are atheists. So, atheists aren't the ones going out of their way trying to convince people that religion isn't right. Or are they? What I'm saying is, I don't like religious people like you trying to force your religious beliefs onto me. Just leave me alone. Did Jesus write the Bible? Well, the answer is yes, he did, and no, he didn't. So how does that work? Well, basically, just like when a man writes a letter, it's not the pen that writes the letter, it's the man who writes it. But the Bible was written by many different authors who were basically like the pens. They were taken up in the spirit, and God himself was the mind behind the letters. He was the mind behind the thoughts. So that's another no then. Did Jesus have siblings. Don't care, but I would really, really appreciate it if you hit the like button and watch this video next. <laughs> Take care. Bye.